this video we're going to start finishing up all the 3D printed pieces and see if we can't uh, wrap this project up. There's still a lot more to do. We have mold making to do. We have wiring to do. This project is really dragging out mainly because I'm just swamped with things to do. That's typical for me so hopefully we can get it wrapped up soon. In the last video we 3D printed this piece here, this mount for the air valve. And as you can see, I've been working on the feed system here. We're going to talk about that in today's video. I 3D printed some pieces here. This is a metering device, a piece of uh, a four-way PVC T bottle adapter here. This will work for a two-liter bottle. I've just got a 20-ounce bottle on here currently. But it's just a simple uh, metering device so that uh, we can feed the pellets down into the uh, heat and chamber. There is a little metal little break so that when the pellets come down through here they don't just go flying everywhere. They'll kind of hopefully slow down a little bit and fall straight into the funnel. Uh, I have yet to test that out. Now this metering device is just some the 3D printed pieces and a PVC four-way. Let's take a look at that. So fairly simple um, I was going to try to use copper but I couldn't believe it or not I couldn't find a copper T but um, we have our handle here that's 3d printed with just a little square on here so that we can indicate it I've also got a little arrow here so I know where up is that arrow really needs to be bigger and then our little cylinder here so our cylinder is just kind of hollowed out here I still need to kind of clean this up a little bit, but uh, you get the idea. Now this, of course, could just be a piece of copper tubing if you wanted to, but I thought I'd just 3D print it. Now I did have to, There, the way this four-way is made, there is like a stop where when you put the pipe in there, it stops. So I had to kind of put this in the lathe and just kind of clean that up. I believe the OD was um, okay. And so it just kind of goes together like so. And then put the handle on. And then you just turn it and meter out, uh, well, this much. So you may need to turn it a couple times, three times, depending on your whatever mold you're using. But I think overall it'll be good. You can just count however many times you need. Um, so that's the metering device. Uh, then our pellet feed is just a bottle adapter that's 3D printed. And uh, I drew it up as a 2 liter bottle. There's not that much room here. This is 20 ounces and that'll probably hold, I don't know, 3 quarters of a pound of material. So that probably will last a good while. Uh, if I wanted to put a bigger bottle on here I think and I needed more space I think I could just come and put a like a 45 here or something and then just turn the bottle up this way in fact I may still do that because trying to dump this on there at a 90 uh, vertically like that it uh, it's hard to prevent it from pellets spilling everywhere so maybe a good idea to just add another 45 right here which I may do that I will solder this up later. Um, I wanted to kind of test it out. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. I did put this little baffle on here. And that's just to kind of slow down the pellets before they enter into the uh, chamber here. This funnel's not that large. Probably could have made this a little bit longer, uh, a little bit wider. But I think it's okay. I just... Um, as the pellets come in and hit the ram here, uh, I didn't want them to kind of just go everywhere, land on top of here. You'd have plastic melting everywhere. So Charlie suggested I put a little break on here. And so this is kind of what I came up with. It's just a little piece of sheet metal. And then I've got a little hinge folded on the end and a pin stuck through here. So uh, let's test this out. That's kind of what where I'm at right now. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bag here just to kind of catch these pellets. And right, I 
if you can see that. We just turn the handle one turn. So that does a pretty good job of slowing the pellets down there. I think that's going to work pretty good. Might slow it down too much. So you can see that's kind of how it um, that's kind of how it works there. I did modify this and kind of remove one of those teeth there so that I could just kind of feel where where it is there. But I think that's going to work out good. We just have uh, a few pieces of pipe here. And you can see it just clips on to our mount here. And I think it's going to work out uh, pretty good. So we've just got a uh, 45 here and uh, a few pieces of 3 quarter inch pipe. I think I'm going to wait to solder this. I probably will eventually solder it just to make sure everything's good. Uh, let's go into Fusion 360 and we'll just take a quick look at these uh, little pieces here. As well as the electronics uh, enclosure. All right, so here we have our metering valve cylinder. This will go through the center of the four-way and just kind of help proportion out uh, the pellets that we need. I started out just drawing a uh, cylinder here. Uh, and then on, I drew a sketch for a bigger circle uh, for the outer diameter of the four-way. And that way when I slide it through there, it'll stop against that. Rounded out those corners, uh, threaded a hole in the center to hold our handle. Uh, I then extruded the center portion here. Came back and uh, used the extrusion to dig out the cylinder a little more. Then I angled just to get a little bit more volume there I angled the inside and rounded off those corners and then in the end here I put a little square so I could kind of index the handle and uh, that was pretty much it um, I 3d printed this vertically like so and uh, it turned out pretty well so next uh, we needed a handle here to go on the end and so this is just a basic cylinder here I put this arrow here which is really really small so that's kind of probably not the best idea so what I did uh, eventually was just dig this out so I think what I'm going to do here is while we're here I'll just go ahead and modify this like so and then we'll just cut across this and knock that out hit OK uh, let's raise that up a little bit just to this point right there yeah, that looks pretty good uh, and then knock these corners off here be good it's not pretty but it should work then that way I'll have a little flat spot at the top there to kind of because it's just hard to see that arrow um, looks like there was a lot of steps here let's just go through it all um, so we did our sketch
went ahead and rounded it all off. Then we uh, multiplied it, put our hole through the center there, chamfer for a countersink screw here. sketched for our little arrow marker and uh, cut the top off here all right yeah that turned out good all right so uh, that is the handle uh, next we did a hopper adapter here it's pretty straightforward I've got it uh, so I can slip it over a piece of three-quarter inch copper tubing and it hit against this shoulder and stop and then we just threaded it for a two liter bottle. Um, let's go through the motions here. I just used the piping or the coil to do the uh, threads here and they're triangular. Uh, let's see what can't remember uh, it says it's a 2.7 millimeter pitch I'm not sure if I downloaded that that got that information off the internet somewhere or just kind of guesstimated put the bottom section in tapered that slightly uh, combine them and then just round it off the edges yeah pretty simple and then last is the PID case enclosure now I can't take all the credit for this design because um, Buster Beagle has a singular enclosure and I kinda just took his idea and made it work for me so this is a dual PID and case enclosure um, I've got it to where it'll mount to the top of the injection motor machine. Uh, I've got a back that'll screw on here. And this was all printed vertically like so. And it took about 13 hours, but it actually turned out really well. I've got some vent holes in the top. And then, of course, uh, I drew up a back for it I drew a solid back and also drew one for some fans I thought that maybe I could use the alarm function on the PID to uh, turn the fans on at a set temperature I haven't got that figured out yet because I'm not sure exactly what voltage the alarm contacts put out this is one 3d printed unit here um, got some vent holes here in the top uh, if you can see in the back here there's a the cover I made uh, two different ones, one with fans and one without. I'm going to try to wire the fans into the PID, but I haven't yet to get into that to see. Uh, a couple of switches and then uh, two PIDs. One for the heater tubes for the main chamber and then another down here for the band heater. This will give us a dual zone uh, heating and I'm uh, with this design, it just lets you fine-tune uh, the temperatures a little bit better. And I think it's going to work out good. Also, I have this little support here that's just kind of super glued on the uh, enclosure. The electronics enclosure, and it just bolts to the top in our little recess over here on the side. Same as our mount. Uh, sorry for all this kind of moving around, but this is just... Uh, it's a big piece here it's 38 inches tall and so it's hard to get it all in the camera frame so yeah we're coming to a close on this project uh, after we get the thing completed and wired up and actually turned on I am going to do some uh, fiberglass wrap on the heat chamber here to kinda help maintain some temperature in there and uh, prevent myself from accidentally getting burnt and then hopefully and uh, we're gonna wire this box up and then we should be good to go 
Then we just need to get into some mold making and I've got a couple different ideas for that but we're going to machine some molds and uh, we'll talk about that in a later video. But hopefully before the end of the year I can get this machine actually finished and then that way we can uh, concentrate at the first of the year on doing some mold making. And in the next video we'll wire up this electronics enclosure. Guys if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in please click on that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. That way, when I post a new video, you'll get a notification, and if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. As always, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.